All right, well, it is another gloomy day in Florida. We got two white Mazdas, look at that. Two white Mazdas, side by side. That's actually a parts car for that Ben bought. But anyway, last time we worked on the abandoned FC, we got it moving under its own power. We didn't really get it driving, um, but we did get it moving under its own power. We moved it in and out of the shop. I actually ended up driving it down the driveway later and I drove it over here. So it, I mean, it's physically driving, but there's definitely a handful of things preventing us from going and taking it on like an actual rep, you know? It, it's just moving under its own power. That's definitely a better way to describe it. So today we're gonna try to get it ripping. Like I wanna actually be able to go freaking do pulls in it and floor it and all of that stuff. So that's what we're working on today. I think we have everything we need to do so. Fingers crossed that we do. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get it in the shop, start working on it. I think it'll fire right up. Really had to fix this seating position too. What is this one? Anyway. Oh, you know why that was so difficult? The uh, handbrake was up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Gotta pull it forward, son. Guess that works. So the first and most important thing we need to take care of here is the serpentine belt and cooling system. So we have no coolant in it. Doesn't really matter that we have no coolant in it because we have no belt on it to spin the water pump, nor do we have a belt spinning the alternator. So we're running off battery and we got no coolant. So those are two pretty big things we need to figure out. So I think we finally have what we need for this. So I emailed the guys uh, at Dirty Dingo and they're the ones who make these uh, this bracket kit. Because basically what this does is it spaces out an F-body water pump to work with the stock truck crank pulley so you don't have to change the crank pulley. I mean, I think you're better off going to all F-body stuff, but anyway, they said that an F-body tensioner will work, so let's see. I mean, it makes sense though. It should definitely work. Yeah, lines up. Sweet. Yeah. No, I mean, it, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but it totally makes sense that an F-body one would work because it matches the water pump. All right, now that's on, we need to figure out how long our belt needs to be. Um, because we're not running power steering right now, we'll deal with that later. So we just need to get a belt that bypasses that. And some string around, try to measure. Quick internet research shows a belt size. So we're gonna try that first. Another thing we need to do is tie our steam port here into the cooling system. So basically this is just allows the air bubbles to get out of the top of the head, um, but it needs to go back into the cooling system, not into like an overflow. So they have these uh, temp ports here, like these little spacers for the water pump has a temp port and then there's one here. I think it'd be cleaner to run it down into this one. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll take this fitting in with me because it looks the exact same. It should be eighth MPT um, and try to get a uh, barb fitting for this. Take the good old Cephi. I'm gonna miss this car when I eventually get rid of it. Who still likes old school little Wayne? All right, we got two belts. At least one of those will work, and then we've got our fitting. So let's get to it. Oh, it's like the perfect size. Uh, we'll need to cut this down a little bit here. All right, well, we'll need to put a hose clamp on each of those, but that's done. All right, well, uh, both of these are too short. We need to go up like a tiny bit from there and we should be good. So I'm gonna go grab another one. All right, this one's a half inch bigger. Who thinks it is gonna go on? I'm hopeful. There we go. That's it, that's a freaking belt, ladies and gents. 
That's a big step. One missing piece of the puzzle solved. Belt, tension, air, and belt. So now we got alternator, water pump. Sweet, stoked on that. I was hoping that would go easily. I need to make radiator mounts for this, but I'm out of argon right now. I have to go get argon tomorrow, but it's Sunday. I guess I could MIG weld them. Still gotta paint it. All right, brackets are done. Just drying right now. This paint that I have right now, this black paint, it, it takes forever to dry. We'll let those sit. Next thing I wanna work on is getting the intake back on, intake air temp sensor hooked up, and then still got a lot of little stuff to do. So let's do that. Went the other way. It's gotta go this way, right? All right, so we just need to put a coin. I wanna see if this shuts. I just, it feels like this isn't gonna fit. You know, who knows? Uh, let's try it. Not even close. All right, well, it looks like we're gonna have to do some modifying to get this intake to fit because we raised the engine up about an inch. So I didn't even think about that. I'm like, why is it not fitting right? I can get it to fit, but then the filter can't go on and vice versa. So I don't know. For now, we're just gonna leave it like that and uh, work on bleeding the cooling system. So let's start filling her up. Huh. That was a sweet miss. So this car has the same dilemma that the LS Miata has, which I fixed on the LS Miata by making an expansion tank. But basically the radiator is not even close to being the highest point in the cooling system. So I filled the radiator up and since it's so low, uh, it literally wasn't getting really anything into the engine. I tried to run it, see if it would, you know, get some circulation going, it wasn't happening. So now I've got the radiator jacked up so it's higher than the rest of the cooling system and it's, it took another two gallons like that. So now we're gonna start it up and try to bleed it out some more with the radiator jacked up like that. PSI of oil pressure, so that's solid. It's idling good. It's definitely still a little rich. I need to adjust the tune file, but just keep bleeding her out. Check it out, I can rev it now. And it comes back to idle. It's actually running pretty good now. Look at that. She's getting there. One, one little project at a time. She's getting there. definitely needs to get done before driving. I gotta pull these fenders off. The tires are just sitting on the fenders because it's stock suspension, which is meant for a much lighter motor than this iron block V8. So it's just kind of like sitting on them. And uh, yeah, as soon as we hit a bump, it's just gonna toast them. And they're not, you know, the fenders are straight, so I don't wanna destroy them. I'm gonna get rid of this silly dress up hardware. Of course that one's cross-threaded. All right, I think the Cobra's got it. Oh, I don't know, I might have to move you out of the way for this. Oh, it's going. If anything, we can at least break it. Dude, these pliers are the best. They're literally grabbing a freaking round bolt. Okay, I gotta move you out of the way, sorry. 
they did it. I said it before, I'll say it again. If you work on cars, you should own a pair of these. They are the best. All right, next most important order of business, uh, running the fan wire. So I really like flush cut pliers and I've had a set that was like six bucks and it's been fun, but I have all uh, Nipex pliers, I love them. So I bought, balled out and bought some Nipex flush cuts. Totally pointless, but this is actually my first time using them. Maybe they're better. Oh yeah, they cut nice. Yeah, totally unnecessary, but I don't know. Kind of a tool nerd. Now they match the rest of my pliers. All right, we got both fans connected, got grounded, and then wire loomed. It goes into the chassis here, so I just gotta hook it up to the arc and see if it works. All right, we got it hooked up, let's see. All right, we got fans now, sweet. So the next thing I wanna do is make a new shifter, shift rod or whatever you wanna call it, because this one's offset to the left and it you have to like push the uh, e-brake over to get it to go into first and second. And it's just kind of an annoying spot. So we're gonna remake that and I've got a, I'm gonna see if I have a shift boot that'll fit this. Oh man, the holes almost line up. They're a little off. I think it's shorter back here. I think this might, uh, I mean, it's close. It'll work. Can make new holes in roof nut later on. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nifty? Uh, that's not really gonna work. You make a new little hole here. Uh, well, almost overdid it there. This is a little janky, but we'll make it nicer later. This thing just like lots of heat comes in through this guy. If only there was one more hole, we'd be set. I mean, that's pretty close. Okay, now let's make a shift rod. All right, I have a game plan. Let's try it out. That. We've got this solid rod. We need this to be flat on one side for about an inch and seven eighths. So I'm gonna see if I can cut this the way I need to. Give it a shot. Look at that. Now we gotta mark and drill our holes. All right, let's see if it fits. Oh, well, we're gonna need longer bolts than this. All right, well, that part of it fits. Now we need to make the part to thread an actual shift knob onto. Beautiful. All right, we've got our little shifter extension. We got the paint drying on it. I actually was gonna weld that stud in, but the tolerance is so tight, it's like pressed in there. So I think that's gonna be just fine. So once that dries, we can put it on. But for now, we're gonna move on to our other ergonomic issue, which is the seat. You can see how upright it is. And I think it doesn't seem too far forward leg wise. So I think if we just drop the back down, it'll solve the issues. I just feel way too close to the wheel, which some of you may know I like being super close, but this is too much. But my legs seem fine. So we're gonna try to drop the back down, angle it back some and see if that solves it. Yeah. 
All right, so the four in there is a little bit uneven. So basically, I think if we cut an inch out of this side, it'll sit level and drop us down an inch because I had to put a spacer, a big one inch spacer under this side. So that's what we're going to try. All right, while that's going down, let's put the shifter on. This paint should be dry by now. I heard, proud of you. You beat it a tire all by yourself, son. I need to get some different black spray paint that dries quicker. This stuff's still wet. It's been like, I don't know, maybe an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. All right, now the piece de resistance. Well, first I gotta get this tape off. Come on, there we go, look at that. Freaking beautiful. The only reason I use this shift knob is one, it came with the car, two, it's an M12 by 125, so I knew I'd have hardware to weld on here or press in at this in this case. Three, uh, I had this shift knob in my first 240, and I really liked it because, you know, I was a kid, and uh, I, I broke it off drifting one time, so. I always wanted another one, and it was the same color and everything, so I figured we might as well put it in this car. Why not? But I mean, you know, it was for the strength of the M12, that's what it was. Well, look at that. Now we're stunting. Now we're freaking stunners, dude. Look at that. On a scale of one to the coolest guy in the world, I would say I'm now the coolest guy in the world because I have a crystal shift knob. <laughs> Just kidding. that's about right still a little close to the wheel but likewise to the pedals I feel about perfect don't have to fully extend my leg to do the quads of shifter <laughs> it makes me so happy this silly shifter makes me happy we can actually go into first without hitting our e-brake all right cool let's get it bolted up and uh, see if there's anything else we need to do before we try this thing out I'm excited Oh, we need to mess with the tune, so we'll do that next. Uh, so it seems like it's running a little rich, so I need to pull some fuel out of it. So let me get this bolted in, we'll do that. And then we'll take it for a rip. Sound good? This is a good fuel table. It's for a six liter. Um, it's for these this size injector. Um, but I believe it's for E85. I can't remember. I know it's for flex, but I don't know if the base tune's for E85. So anyway, I just took like a little bit of fuel out everywhere in the table that I'm going to be. I never go above basically no boost this here is boost because this was also a turbo truck uh we don't have any boost so this is pretty much the table we'll be in so i'm gonna try that um see if it changes anything see if it runs any better all righty almost done writing let's try it out might not be enough fuel <laughs> I had to uh, change the map calibration and I got some wrong information. It wasn't running right at all and then I finally got the right one and now it seems to be running fine. So, got it running. It's got a full cooling system. Fans are working. We're pretty much ready, guys. She's ripping. We're going to have to figure out something for our air filter here. But, for right now, open tube will do it's crazy how quiet this thing is the freaking whatever that noise is in the engine bay is louder than the exhaust it kind of sounds good though uh so one more thing i'm going to do before we go here let me turn this off i'm going to try to roll the windows down or at least the driver's side i had there's some wires there i have my power probe i want to roll them down all right well this side look at that works like a charm window rolls right up reverse polarity uh, and we roll the window down great other side the motor stripped out or something the motor just i'll take a look at it i guess i'll dig into it a little bit and see if i can fix it if not it's not a huge deal at least we can get one window down get some airflow just like 
just driving in and out of the shop with no airflow has been horrible. The boot should help too. It was just like fumes before. So anyway, I'm gonna mess with that other one and we'll see what happens. And then we're going for a drive. All right, that's what we're doing next. All right, guys, this is it. This is gonna be the first drive. She's running good, idle and smooth. Uh, one, this front tire was like literally debeated. It was so flat. And I finally realized that and aired it up. And now like the steering is so much better. Before this thing was like unbearably hard to turn when uh, with no power steering. Now it feels all right. So anyway, I'm excited, man. This thing went from a shell in complete disarray to running in, in not much time at all. Like a, a week's worth of work or so, which is super cool. So this is a cool moment for me. This is a fast build. So let's do it. gonna be the sketchiest, by far the sketchiest, no tag drive I've ever done. Cause this thing is, in and of itself is sketchy. We had a painted windshield. suspension wise one because we have stock suspension but two because the uh oh do I feel more comfortable? the rear arms um are <laughs> like not even really fully bolted in because uh, the nuts are cross-threaded so we basically got no rear toe arms for the test drive but it was pretty it's pretty wonky man this thing feels good for a 5.3 it's got some freaking pep man ah oh, man all right let's uh let's check it up and see if we broke anything major or for for uh just rubbing on something fingers crossed okay i think i found our problemo you can see all these marks on the drive shaft literally hitting right now which makes sense because i mean it, it, it's vehicle speed related so i guess i could try to lift this trans up some you know throw a couple spacers in here space it up just enough to uh get it off the exhaust here because i don't really have any good way to bring the exhaust down without like remaking it oh you know what you know what might be the problem because the engine's higher so now this is tilted back that's the one thing so we if you haven't been following along uh, for this build, basically the engine wouldn't fit and the pan would hit the steering rack. So I extended the engine mounts like 20 mil, brought the engine up some, that gave us clearance here, brought the pan above the subframe here, uh, and solved all those problems, but it did create some other issues such as this. So I'm gonna do what I can. Oh, I have the engine hoist. Yeah, so I can do this by myself because Ben's gone. I'm gonna jack this up. I'm gonna put a couple spacers in here and uh, we're gonna go back out. Uh. 
All right, I think that's fixed, um, at least for now. We'll have to make a more elegant solution than what I'm using right now. This is just proof of concept. Make sure that's our issue. Man, I am so stoked right now. This thing runs and drives and ripped just fine. Like, everything felt solid. I mean, no, okay, that's that's wrong. <laughs> Things did not feel solid. Things felt very wonky. But it shifted good, it drove good, it ran good, it was clean, it didn't break up. Like, everything felt good besides the fact that we've got stock and horrible suspension on here that needs to get taken care of. So. Definitely need to do a set of coilovers, some arms, things like that. But man, it freaking drives, guys. Like, it literally drives. I am so excited about this. I, I just can't, can't get over it. I'm so happy. It freaking drives just fine. You know? <laughs> Stoked. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm just excited. Like, finally drives, you know? And again, it, it was a short project. Like, I'm, I'm happy we got so much done in such a short amount of time. And, and it's running and driving, you know? It, it's a really rewarding feeling because of that. So... Still a few issues to take care of. Definitely need to work on the suspension and all that stuff. But for the most part, things ripping. Uh, comment below if instead of taking the LS Miata to the three-day Black Friday drift event, which is a very rowdy event where everyone has a blast and tandems hard and drives hard, or if we should try to knock this thing out, finish up, you know, handbrake and angle and stuff and take it. I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards that because it's kind of, this would be a really fun party car. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what you think of the FC. Freaking running and ripping. Super exciting. So I guess that's going to be it for this video. We got two LS freaking Mazdas running. That is sick. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, goodbye.